other tune of the month. It is the last tune of the month for 2016 for it is December. And I thought I would share with you a waltz. Um, this seems fitting. It's been a while since we've done a waltz. I get a lot of notes uh, from you guys about how much you love the waltzes we have done. And I have recently acquired a new favorite waltz, which I thought I'd share with you. Um, I just learned this tune this fall. I, um, I had a guitarist touring with my band, uh, the wonderful John Cody, and he brought this tune to us. It's called the April Waltz, and it's by Selma Kaplan. It is a classic New England style contra dance waltz. And um, the story goes that Selma was inspired to write it because of a unexpected April blizzard that hit a contra dance that she was at and snowed the whole place in. Um, and uh, I love being snowed in. I love the snows. I hope they're coming soon since it's December. And uh, I love beautiful waltzes. So this pairing spoke to me as I hope it will speak to you. Here's the April waltz. And that's the tune. If you're just listening, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you in the new year. And if you're ready to play, you're ready to play. You have your instruments, you have your learning ears open, and let's do it. So, this tune is in G major, one sharp, and um, you may have noticed it sounds kind of noty. There's a lot of noodly, backy, forthy kind of things. Um, and we've dealt with this before. We know that, well, it sounds like a bunch of different notes. It's actually groups of little patterns, and if you use the tricks of listening for where there's scales and arpeggios, you should be able to put this together pretty easily. Um, so I'm going to slow it down, and I'll take the ornaments out, and we'll do the A section. Now, I'll tell you right off the bat, there's a trick to this A section, and that is you don't play a single second finger. Not the whole time. So it's in G major. <laughs> But this tune does pickups like from the D string. Right? So it's almost like a sieve. It's a very pentatonic, actually, those are pentatonic scales when you filter notes out. So if you kind of have ready to go in your hand, your open D, first finger E, skip your second finger straight to G. And do the same thing on the A string. And you need that fourth finger E. That's what makes it pretty. That's the magic note. Okay, so with that palette in mind, here's the A section. first ending, second ending deal. Uh, how it works is you have a clump of tune and then a first ending which takes you back to the beginning. You play clump of tune again exactly as before and then there's a second ending which closes the thing off to be ready for the B section. Just playing along with that slowly and knowing about the second finger sieve, you probably have picked up that whole A section or you can rewind and pick it up next time. Uh, but just in case, I'll slow it down, I'll break it down a tiny bit more so you know what's coming. This tune has a lot of three pickups. One. Right, so that first chunk, if you weren't sorting out where the downbeat was, that could be tricky. So one, two, three, one. Second 
phrase. First ending. So that first ending. That's all the first ending is. And we go back to the beginning. First ending, second ending, so it's really only two notes different. All right, so if we talk about, let's pause for a quick moment and we'll talk about bowings for waltzes. Um, if you hung out with me to do the waltz far away, uh, a few months ago, we talked a lot about the big, big, little, big, big, little bowing. Um, works really well for these waltzes that have mixed quarters and eighth notes. Um, and it's going to work the same way here. Whenever you have a quarter note situation like this, did you see it? Big, big, little. And I'm getting the second big by slurring those two eighth notes. Big, And then little means, of course, you use less bow. So that, anytime you have a quarter note and then two sets of eighth notes, that's a great bowing to use for a waltz. Beautiful, smooth, sounds much better than big, little, little, which gets too choppy. Um, so anytime you have a quarter note bar in this waltz, that's a good thing to use. Anytime you have a dotted quarter, like the first bar, one, two, three, it has three eighth notes in it. One, two, three. Notice I slurred the second three eighth notes. One, two, three, one, two, three. Alright, that's going to work really well as a default as well. So the pickups, there are three pickups, I'm going to slur those. Sorry. One, two, three, slur. So now I have to slur. Slur. One, two, three. Slur. Little, 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 big, big, little land. Aha! It all works out. Watch it again. Slur the three pickups. One, two, three. Slur. mystery. If you're not used to thinking about bowings in patterns like this, go back and check out a few earlier tunes of the months. I talk a lot about how to think about this and how to do it this way and it really systematizes how you are handling your bow um, in a way that you don't have to think about much but you can still get beautiful smooth bowing with gravity down bow on the down beats. So there's your A section. You can go back and replay any of that you need but let's do B section. My favorite part. Yeah, so I do a triplet pickup. And notice it's the first second finger of the whole tune. through that it's a half B construction. It means that the second half of the B section is the second half of the A section. So I should have stopped there. I almost forgot to. And I'll show you in detail this part of the B that's unique. Did you notice it was a one, two, three slur, er, er, Boeing? One, two, three. That's kind of the first 
half phrase. Let's watch it again. So it starts a lot like the A section, only this time instead of starting here on the B, we're starting on the re root. And we're gonna build up past the fourth finger E to this second finger G on top. It's the only second, well, there are two big second fingers of the whole tune. They're both in the B section. This is the first one. I'll do it again. second finger down there, this E minor deal. Yeah! So those are the two phrases, well it's really one big long phrase, that makes up the B part of the B section. I'll do it again. Climb up. So. somebody else. If you Google this uh, elsewhere, there are uh, a couple great recordings of, of this waltz out there. Um, played a lot. And if you're thinking about the sieve hand, you won't have a whole lot of running your nose into the wall. Um, you also want to use those waltz bowings um, that correspond to the rhythmic pattern. If there's a dotted quarter, one, two, three, slur three, da, da, da. And when there's just one quarter note, big, big, little. And if you follow that, this whole tune's going to sound great. You can also put in a whole lot of left hand ornaments anytime you have room, as we've talked about in previous videos, a quarter note or dotted quarter note. You can use a hem run, you can use a flat um, double grace note from above or below. If you don't know what these are, check out past two of the month videos because I tell you all about them. And now's your chance to apply. Uh, I hope you have loads of fun playing with this tune and uh, that you get to play for many dancers in the holiday season and the blizzard season to come, whether you actually get them or not. And I will see you guys in 2017. Oh, I almost forgot to mention, if you would like to see sheet music for this and all future tunes of the month, um, you can make sure that you are subscribed to my newsletter. Go to my website, www.mariblack.com and uh, hit the newsletter button. I will always send out sheet music, just especially for the newsletter subscribers for the current tune of the month. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you next year. Bye.